All right, everyone, welcome to the Robert Show. It is um, that time of the day when we we are going live, and uh, uh, I'm super excited because I have a you know a huge thought leader and inspiration in the data space. Uh, a person that I've been talking over years, and uh, now again I get to host her on the Robert Show. So very happy to have her. It's none other than Bob Moses, thought leader and CEO and co-founder of the data observability category leader Monte Carlo. But, uh, so without any further ado, let me bring Bob up here. Hey Bob, welcome to the Robert Show. Hey Robert, thanks for the kind introduction. It's so great to be here. Always love oh, uh, meeting with you and partnering with you. Oh, definitely. It's uh, always such a pleasure to meet you. And as we were talking off air, we, we met at Big Data London and it feels like ages ago. And there's so much, uh, you know, the world is evolving so fast. The data space is evolving so fast. And there's always so much to talk to you. And that's one of the reasons I always love hosting Monte Carlo. You, Leo, Ryan, you guys have such great innovations happening all the time at Monte Carlo. So uh, very happy to have you back on the Robert Show. But uh, before we get into the bits of, you know, obviously uh, the ne you know, next month, Gartner is coming up and what are you most excited about and all of those things. Would you like to uh, introduce yourself and Monte Carlo just for our audience to know a little about uh, your journey? Yeah, I'm happy to. You know, I started joking that like the data industry is a little bit like Taylor Swift. Like we all are sort of like reinventing ourselves every couple of years and trying to stay ahead. Right. Um, exactly. So, yeah, I think it's uh, if you reflect back on like, you know, just a couple of months ago, it was a totally different world in data. Um, I don't know. I, I find it really exciting and exhilarating. I think also, you know, the change offers a lot of opportunity for innovation, which is really mm -hmm. what we're all kind of here for to like drive impact on the lives of people with like innovative approaches and data. So I get a kick out of that, but I jumped ahead. Um, yeah, my name is Barr. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Monte Carlo. Um, we started Monte Carlo with the goal of actually helping people use data. And, you know, our mission is to accelerate the adoption of data by reducing what we call data downtime. So what I found is that in working with data teams, you know, whether this is data engineers or data analysts or data scientists, they're building mm -hmm. lots of products. It could be a dashboard, like a marketing dashboard. It could be a machine learning recommendation algorithm. It could be a generative AI product or generative AI applications. Right. In all of those instances, I don't know if you remember this like moment when you like look at it and you're like, holy shit, the data is wrong. Or like WTF, <laughs> what's wrong here, right? There's this like right. shot and then you start sweating and you're like, oh my God, what's going to happen with the data? That has happened to me so many times in my career. And the reality is, you know, when you look at sort of software engineers, they're building applications that are highly reliable and they have lots of solutions to help them make sure that their software is reliable. But data teams have been flying blind for many, many years. We sort of like ship a product and hope that it'll be OK. Um, mm. And the reality is like that just isn't sufficient. And when you think about like the pace of change, you know, people there's a lot more people working with data. There's a lot more data. And, you know, we talk about generative AI shortly, but, you know, in this world, like the, the consequences of having bad data are really, really, really sort of high stakes for companies. Um, I don't know, just like an example that came to mind just from the last week. I don't know if you saw sort of Air Canada was actually forced to pay a customer yeah. because this chatbot uh, basically hallucinated and promised a discount that didn't exist. And that was because of bad data, right? And so forget about like the cost that Air Canada is incurring for a second, which is obviously serious. Think about like the brand and the trust that was damaged as a result of that, exactly. right? Um, I saw that and I was thinking to myself, you know, how do we actually make sure that we're not stopping ourselves from actually developing data products that are amazing and continuing to adopt data, but doing that in a way that actually gives us confidence that the data is reliable. And that, you know, the conversations that we're having and the discussions and the actions that we're driving are actually based on real data. Because the worst thing to do is to actually, you know, not be, be slow down and not be able to use data or not be able to deliver on the promise of data or do it in a way that compromises what we believe in um, as a society. So that's what Monte Carlo spends time on. And we're really, really stoked, you know, to meet everyone at, at Gardner coming up soon. 
Oh yeah, definitely. Thanks for sharing all the details in uh, in a lot of the examples that you kind of shared because that's something which is pretty interesting. I was, you know, one thing that I always like we did a meet up uh, just a few weeks back and there were like almost hundreds of people coming under the roof, but there were like almost 10 sessions that we did and each slide it was around Gen, Gen AI that we kind of hosted, but each slide there had one thing in common, even if they were talking about Gen AI, data quality was something which they had in their slides. And I was like, okay, you need to get your data right to actually get the game up in Gen AI space. So definitely the Air Canada is such a huge and interesting example, not only from point of view of, you know, the damages that they're paying, but at the same time, the goodwill, the trust that the customer has. Uh, and those types of things, problems, if uh, you know, Monte Carlo is solving. It's always fun to, you know, uh, learn more about it. But uh, the talk of the town definitely is uh, Gartner Data and Analytics Summit, which is happening just, uh, it's just less than two weeks uh, to go for that. Uh, 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 so can you tell us more about um, uh, what Monte Car Carlo's plan at Gartner, we or Monte Carlo will be there as an exhibitor? uh what about the conference uh what are you most excited about for yeah for sure well i, I think there's two things that i'm most excited maybe maybe three the first is <laughs> um the thing that i you know really most excited is like meeting our customers in person right so right. um there's a bunch of people that I, we expect to be there um pepsico team fox team american airlines a bunch of other amazing data teams honestly like the strongest data teams in the world um who are actually like pioneering all, all of everything that we talked about and are actually like, you know, pioneering this category of data observability. Um, so that's probably mm -hmm. the most, I don't know, I'm still sort of a junkie of meeting in person. I, I'll i be honest, I still care deeply about uh, about personal connections. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's like definitely, you know, one of the things that probably most excited. I think the second thing that's really exciting about particularly the conference this year is that there's specifically actually a, a category dedicated to data observability. And I think mm -hmm. that's really remarkable um, because, first of all, this was not the case just a few years ago. Like just a few years ago, the term data observability often confused with other terms, often you know difficult to clarify between data governance, data quality, and others. And I think data observability has really emerged at this sort of like umbrella term that includes data quality, includes, you know, thinking about how to identify root cause of problems, be the first to know about them, but also also figure out how to actually um, resolve the issues that, that we find in, in, um, in the incidents of data downtime. Right. And I think the category has sort of evolved in that direction um, in a really in a really neat way. And it's just really amazing to me that Gartner is recognizing this as well. Like that is such a vote of confidence. And, you know, we partner often with Gartner, um, you know, kind of on learnings and, you know, we're learning so much right. from what Gartner is doing, right? They're obviously speaking to the top chief data officers and CTOs. Um, it's been quite remarkable to see how inquiries for data observability has really increased yeah. over time. More and more companies are asking about that. So, I think that's really sort of impressive, I would be saying. Um, I want to say in terms of how the category has evolved and now it's actually being prioritized by such an important organization like Gartner. So that's the second thing that I'm really going to be excited about. There's obviously sort of going to be a bunch of sessions about the topics, uh, about the topics that folks want to learn. They're welcome to sort of, um, uh, you know, jump in. And, and I would say the third thing that I'm most excited about is, you know, actually like, feeling the energy in conferences and like seeing where, what folks are doing exactly. and, you know, what's sort of the, you know, kind of like the next frontiers. There's a lot of innovation that's happening in data and AI downtime and data and AI observability. There's a lot of work that we're doing on that. And so I can't share too much, um, uh, but would love to have conversations with customers on that because there's so much more um, to come. And so I'm just excited to kind of get the early glimpse of what folks think about that. And um, yeah, stay tuned for more. Yeah, I can't wait. Uh, definitely looking forward to it. In uh, like you said, data observability being a category altogether now becomes a huge thing that I've seen. At least I remember. You know, we spoke like almost three years back. This was when you actually came on the Robert Show for the first time, and I remember uh, you were all in, and you you have you know taken those efforts to build this category to and take it to another level. 
And today here we are, you know, looking at Gartner, looking at CDOs, CDOs, a lot of uh, enterprise leaders coming in talking about, oh, how do we make our data quality better? How do we implement data observability? How does it look like? So it's huge. Uh, any uh, and I'm I'm pretty excited about what Monte Carlo is going to come up uh, uh, at Gartner with those key announcements, and that's one of the reasons we are also attending in person. We'll be covering the ground and we'll be bringing that uh, to our audience and to others as well. Anything else in terms of um, uh, you would like to share around Gen AI? Because we know we are we like I know we are still in the early days. Uh, in the world of Gen AI, but there's a lot of talking that's happening in the enterprise AI world. And that's what I've been listening from, you know, the other enterprise leaders as well, where they kind of feel that 2024 is the year for enterprise AI. It's going to pick up very massively. There'd be a lot of, uh, you know, developments happening on that front. Any any thoughts or anything that you've been listening as well, Bert? Yeah, for sure. And first I'll say, you know, we'll be at uh, booth 519. If folks have questions, yeah. want to chat more about this, stop by and talk to us. But yeah, I'll share a couple of thoughts. So I think there's, you know, I think there's definitely more talk than doing, at least as far as I'm seeing when it comes to generative AI. And I'm hoping that in the next few years that flips, but time will tell. Um, I think there's a few things that is happening right now. There's obviously a lot of pressure from generative, on, from generative AI, from, the, from top folks, to actually for data teams to deliver. But there's two things that are happening as a result. First of all, data teams are becoming even more important in an organization. The second is that the quality of that data and the basis of that data to be a strong foundation becomes even more important. And those mm. two things are awesome, regardless of whether generative AI sort of materializes or delivers or in the hype or not. Because I believe data teams are one of the most important sort of core tenants of a company. And generative AI is actually just propelling data teams to be even more in the forefront and in the center of this. Like you cannot imagine a company not doing something with generative AI and not having a super strong data team with a really strong data foundation. And so I'm really excited about that. That's the first thing. You know, companies, if they haven't figured out their data strategy, regardless of generative AI, they're like way behind right now. And so if you're a company that's thinking about, you know, how you're going to increase your customer impact and, you know, advance your mission in the next few years, data has to be a part of that story. Like data has got to help you drive that, right? And so that's first and foremost. I think the second thing on generative AI in particular, I think what companies are really learning is that their moat is going to be in their first party data. Meaning in order to create a really strong generative AI application, you need to augment mm -hmm. that, whether via RAG or fine tuning with actually data that you have about your subscription base, about your users, about your consumers. It could be demographical information, social information, financial information, whatever. It could be a preference of what kind of food you like for the right kind of company, right? But having mm -hmm. that information, first party information, is actually what makes generative AI applications um, uh, stronger or sort of more relevant, if that makes sense. And so yeah. in those instances, again, making sure that that the data that's powering that, as we mentioned in the Air Canada example, couldn't be more mm. important. Um, so I just want to say like, yeah, it's a fast, it's a fast moving time and space. Um, yeah. But I think it's the right one to be in. I'm really excited about sort of where, where we're headed. It's a space to watch. And I just think that we should be all really fortunate that we're kind of in this time and in this moment in history and get to not only witness it, but also be a part of this revolution. Um, and so I'm really stoked about that. And I'm, I'm sort of excited to see where we go as, a, as an industry. Totally. I can't wait for that. In, uh, definitely looking forward to all the innovations and uh, announcements that uh, Monte Carlo will be making at Gartner as well. Or for those who are visiting Gartner, 519 is the booth where you can find Monte Carlo and team. And uh, they also always have like some amazing swag that I always see, like those uh, caps and t-shirts. I love it. Uh, I have all of those, at least uh, most of the swag as well. Uh, so I'm going to catch up with you at Monte Carlo, at uh, Gartner, Burr, and the team, the Monte Carlo team as well. Uh, but this was great. Thanks for sharing all the information and uh, definitely looking forward to seeing how data observability keeps evolving with time and uh, comes out as bigger as possible and always, uh, you know, huge in the space. Uh, so thanks for doing this and thanks for visiting the Robert Show once again. 
thank Robert. You're an important part of this journey as well. You've you've been here from day one, from a, even before the category was created. So um, <laughs> it's been fun. Yeah. Can't wait to see what happens next time we speak. I know, right? Okay, awesome. This is great, Bar, and uh, thank you once again. You take care and have a great day. Thank you, everyone, for watching us today.